This is code.org, and this is about to get complicated. Diagonal movement. Woohoo! Updating. Well, here, I'm going to hit run. Okay, so here's my mouse. Notice that it's showing me right now my mouse is at 50x the whole time, and that's because it never moved over, right? I hit reset, and notice my cursor shows me 50x is like here-ish, and it never moves over, so it stayed 50x the whole time. The y changed because y0 is way at the top, y400 is down here, so while it goes down, the y would change. All right. And that's what it's telling us. It's letting us know what those properties equal, what the X and Y property equal as the animation is going, as the code runs. All right. Updating X and Y properties of the sprite can make it move diagonally. You can use the watchers, these are watchers, under the code area to see how each property is changing. Read the code that makes the mouse go down. Run the program and look at the watchers to see what's happening to the X and Y. And as we saw, right, the Y is steadily going up right now, but the X isn't moving. Keep in mind, though, this is 0y, this is zero. This is 400y. So we would need y to go up for the mouse to move this way. This is 0x, this is 400x. It's kind of reverse, right? So if we're going down this way, if we also want to go this way, though, x would have to increase. So both would need to be increasing to head down and over. All right, add one more line of code that makes it move diagonally. Run your code again and look at the watchers. All right, so we're moving down. What did I say? We also need to go this way, right? So I'm going to look how they're moving down, and I'm going to say, all right, well then, oops, sprite. I'm just going to grab sprite x. I'll drop it right here. I'm going to say mouse.x equals, and I'm going to add to x because this is 0x, this is 400. So if I want to go this way or this way, equals mouse.x plus 2. We'll move over the same amount. So what this says, draw loop runs 30 times a second, and it says mouse x is now equal to what mouse x used to be equal to plus 2. So when I hit run, x for the mouse is 50, y for the mouse is 50, which is way up here. Now the draw loop runs, and it says, okay, the mouse's x value, the mouse has a new x value. It's equal to what? Well, the mouse's old x value. What's the old? Oh, 50. Okay. Plus 2. Okay, so mouse x is now 52. Same thing will happen with mouse y. We hit the bottom, we loop back around, and it says, okay, mouse's x value has a new x value. Oh, what is it? It's old x value. Oh, what did we just say? 52. 52 plus 2 is 54. Its new x value is 54. Its new y value is 54, and it draws the sprite again. Loops back around, covers up the background, adds to it, draws the sprite again. And so it gives the illusion of movement, and it's pretty cool. Uh, challenge, set the rotation property so that it's facing the way it moves. Ah, let's see if we got the rotation property. All right, so I'm in sprites. Oh, yes, yeah, sprite.rotation. Now, where would I do this? Think about this. We don't need to do the, we don't want to move the rotation 30 times a second. I'm going to change it up here where I change scale, right? Because I don't need to resize the mouse 30 times a second. The mouse isn't growing, so I keep it out of this draw loop, out of this draw function. Same with rotation. I'm just going to move it once to point in the right direction. Honestly, I'm not really sure. Let's do negative 45. Oh. Mouse dot rotation. Uh, I'm trying negative 45. The nice thing about code, you can test stuff. Hey, that looks pretty good. You know what? I think that's right. Yeah. Sweet. Even got the challenge. Onward. 